some boxes come to the fact. So come to the fact is an experiment which supports Einstein photon theory of the light and particle theory of the light. Compton should provide support for Einstein's photon theory of light. It's about collision of a photon with an electron. So experiment is about the collision between one electron and a photon. We said in photoelectric effect, an electron is going and colliding a photon and removing it. If the photoelectron has enough energy, which must be minimum, work function of that metal. And if energy of the photon is equal to work function of the metal, so you will make the electron free. But if the energy of the photon is greater than work function, free plus some kinetic energy will be given to the electron, which is called photoelectron. This is about collision of an electron and a photon, but this time electron is free. Not in, on the surface of a photosensitive surface. Yeah, you are going to put someplace an electron, free electron, then you are going to send a photon to this free electron, and you are going to observe something. It's about this. It's just like a collision of two billiard balls. In the, uh, in the 11th grade, I know you studied that, which is the moment collision of the particles. Elastic collisions, elastic collisions, such collisions you said last year. It is similar to that one. So, an electron and a photon. There will be an electron at rest. We are going to send a photon, single photon to the electron. After photon collides the electron, what's going to happen? If a photon behaves like a particle, collision of a photon, an electron must be similar to collision of two billiard balls. In collision of two billiard balls, which is last year named as elastic collisions, two quantities are conserved. One of them is the momentum. Momentum is conserved, which is called linear momentum. Second one is kinetic energy is conserved. Yani before the collision, how much momentum the system has? After collision, you'll have the same amount of momentum, which means linear momentum is conserved. Second one is, before the collision, how much kinetic energy all the system has? After collision, system, and yani these particles together will have the same amount of kinetic energy. So, total energy must be conserved. Total momentum must also be conserved if this collision is elastic collision between the photon and electron. So I, we are not going to write an equation for this. In fact, this, uh, this title has an equation, but it's not it's in your book. Just the results. And after that's that we wrote all the equations and then we got the results, now we are saying results. Yes, when a photon strikes an electron at rest, it's observed that these electron recoils, recoils in some directions, as you see. And photon initially coming horizontal, then deflect the direction, as you see, with some angle phi. Result tells you that photon transfers some of its energy and momentum to the electron, because initially, electron is at rest. And where does this energy come from? From the photon. Photon is giving some of its kinetic energy to electron. If some of the kinetic energy of the electron is given to the photon, what happens to the energy of the photon? Decreases. So, after collision, energy, of course, energy and frequency are directly proportional, energy and frequency of the scattered photon must decrease. So, while its wavelength increases, because we know that energy and wavelength, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. Yeah, it is. Scattered photon after collision must have less energy, small frequency, but longer wavelength than the original photon. Yes, it is. This increase in the wavelength after this collision. Yes. Wavelength after the collision is represented by lambda prime. Before the collision, lambda. So lambda prime is longer than lambda. This 
increase in the wavelength, then a lambda prime minus lambda, which is called delta lambda. This increase in the wavelength of a scattered photon is called Compton shift. Compton shift. The amount of the wavelength shift, how much is this difference, delta lambda, depends on this angle. At what angle this photon will be scattered. So the amount of the wavelength shift delta phi depends on the angle theta at which photon is scattered. And Compton shift is difficult to detect using visible light. Yeah, the visible light, uh, I'm going to put a button in here and light will strike, no, not observable. You should use high energy photons, X ray photons. X ray, you know, yes. is a big energy compared to visible. So, order is going this way visible, ultraviolet, X rays. So, only by X ray photons, this experiment can be done. This is an exam question. Which kind of photon must be used in? Uh, carbon shift experiment. So, X-ray photons. 